Hi, I'm Brett. This is part two of our billet block engine rebuild upgrade. And in the part one, you've probably watched us talk about the differences between the Will All Racing um, billet block assembly benefits versus the Subaru Cast 2.5 EJ series engines. And now we're talking about getting ready to bolt the heads on. And what we want to do in this video is explain to you the critical difference between a Subaru factory uh, head on the EJ series 2.5. Let's talk about say 2015 model STI because we know the heads are very common right back to around 2008 and the engine that we're building is around the similar year model. And what I've got beside me is the um, ported and polished and upgraded heads compared to original factory um, standard head. Now before I go into detail and show you the individual components let, let's understand the reasons why we do these things. Now, when you typically go for an upgrade on a standard 2.5 litre Subaru engine, you know, uh, we all know that uh, pistons have an inherent um, limitation on their reliability. Um, that's not any bad design by Subaru, it's just a factory tolerance um, to stop design strength. So typical upgrade, pistons and rods. So at that point in time, typically you can run those components with really good power upgrades um, a lot more reliability with a lot of other standard assembly parts. If you want them more improvements, you would typically go for a, a larger turbo. Um, you might go for a, uh, start thinking about then what you're gonna do about the heads because what happens is as you start increasing the boost to take advantage of the pistons and rods, you start be, um, trying to uh, hit uh, a huge amount of gas flow through original factory heads. Now, um, you can run really, really big boost um, up um, improvements to gain more power and torque but as you increase the boost the direct relationship in power and torque gain starts to diminish because the flow capacity of the engine just can't flow that much boost through original factory um, heads the porting is limitations the um, size of the valves are limitations and then of course the camshaft design so one of the things that um, around say 260 280 kilowatts on a roller dyno you start approaching those mechanical limitations of the head. So some people then go, I oh, will do a set of cams. Now the unfortunate thing is the cost benefit of a set of cams um, will give you an improvement, but not the relative amount of improvement that you would want to hope to expect for the amount of cost to improve the camshaft on its own. So then the question is, well, what else do you need? Well, the big thing you need is bigger valves and more flow. And this is what these have here. And then when you're talking well over um, sent just as well as the original factory head, it's not a problem. <laughs> so um, we're talking about the advantages of then bigger flow capacities with the good quality heads. And this particular one here, thankfully it's not the one that's fallen over on the bench to try and show you the video, has got exactly that. So let's just get this original factory head back up on its side. And you can see original port um, on the, he the head here. Remembering this is the, the side of the engine that has got the rocker cover assembly, the camshaft um, pulleys on the front here with the uh, timing belt, and this part here is what bolts up to the top of the top of the uh, head, and this is the combustion chamber with the spark plug. Now, if you then compare the size of that port to the fully ported head, which represents the maximum amount of material you can reliably remove without either weakening the design of the head or risking um, leakage because the, the limitation in here is not just the mechanical components of the, the valves operating but also the water jacket within here because if you take too much material out of here um, you end up breaking through the casting into the water jacket assembly and that just causes a whole help heap of other painful nightmares but also um, you, some people might go for a mild porting but really you wouldn't expect a, any noticeable increase in performance because in a, in a forced induction engine um, Porting doesn't give you as much gain as what you would get out of, say, a uh, normally aspirated engine like my rally car, my Honda Civic. But when you start increasing the size of things, and this one here you'll notice much bigger uh, valves as compared to the original factory valves. It's a little bit difficult to see because the face of the valve itself is not that much different, but it's what's up inside that actually counts. And also one big thing is then, what are you going to do to take advantage of that grunt. So of course, to take advantage of the available grunt with the flow, you put a really good set of camshafts and there are some fantastic cam designers around. And remember, these cams on the Subaru EJ series are a variable cam control, so you've got to choose very carefully. There are some um, 
school of thought to not use variable cam control and go back to old school design, but the bottom end performance with variable cam control is huge. Um, so from a technology point of view, my attitude is you might as well take advantage of it. Um, but the other big thing is you'll notice these heads have now been um, remachined to take 14mm head studs. So if you just try to compare the side size of that hole there, which is where the bolt goes through to pull the head down onto the block, which is designed for 14mm, the original factory ones, as you can see in here, are much, much smaller. Now, you've got to remember when you get this machined, there's not a lot of material in these different components, which are all grinding and changing and, and modifying, but also at the same time, you've got to modify the head gasket to suit the larger hole, and that alone is also a little bit of a difficult challenge on its own. So the bottom line is, yes, you can run an original factory head, cams, valves, porting on a billet block assembly, you're just going to be limited with the amount of power you can flow through that head. You can then take a big step upgrade and do this type of stuff and that opens a whole new world of improved performance of which you can then take advantage of because what we call in having a happy engine, you can force components to generate power but that's what causes reliability issues but if you have those components working within their design tolerances and not running stupid boost with high flow forcing through small gaps you'll end up with a much more efficient engine that will generate a lot more power and torque in a much more happy way so there you have it that's the inherent design of what these heads are going to go on to our billet block assembly because we've now got the the base component with good reliable solid bottom end 2.6 stroke a crank a hell of a lot of strength in the block so we can now put the really good heads on good flow capacity really good valve size really good set of variable cam control um, and a remote replacement set of aftermarket cams so we can then have the next step which we'll talk about in our part three of our video we will talk about turbo design uh, inlet manifold design whether you go for a front mount or a top mount intercooler and then what type of tuning solution you're going to have to bring it all together so if you're looking for more information you can follow us on facebook youtube twitter and instagram go to our new website and there's some fantastic search commands you can take on there now it's thousands and thousands of parts you can search all in one place based on your year make and model or you can just put in a keyword and um, we'll give you another update soon in part three bye for now